Good afternoon. I'm Kay Orr, and I'm an instructional technology specialist in the Rockwell Independent School District. Are you ready to learn some exciting new ways to use your smart board interactive whiteboard with your students? Think about the ways that you've created lessons in the past. For example, with PowerPoint. Have you ever wanted to add just a little bit more creativity or perhaps more collaboration get your students really interacting and talking? Well, by the end of this lesson, you'll have three new ways to engage your students using your new smart board interactive whiteboard. So let's get started. I'm going to come over here to the page sorter and press on slide two at page two and um, let's get started. I'm going to share with you today some hide and reveal activities and if you want to follow along I'm starting on page 41 in your beginner learner workbook. Today we'll talk about move and reveal, order and reveal, and Finally, erase and reveal. And I just used an example there of move and reveal as I showed those to you. So um, let's get started now. Let's move on. We're going to use an example here to show you um, how you can do each of those three types of hide and reveal activities. So our question is, where is King Tut's tomb? If you were going to use a move and reveal activity, you would have some sort of object here. And it would be covering up your text and you would move that object, and underneath that object, you would see the answer to your question. It would reveal the answer to your question. That's an example of a move and reveal that uses an object um, just to cover up the answer. The second type um, of find reveal activity is order and reveal, and that uses layers. If you want to think about it, we have a white background layer, and the text is also in white, so that's why you don't see it here. But if we move a layer in between there of a contrasting color, I'm going to press on this object, the red box, move that layer in between the background layer and the foreground layer of the text, um, you can now, it reveals what the answer is. So that is order and reveal using the layers. I'm going to press and drag that back up again. And finally, the third one is erase and reveal. Um, you don't see the answer down here again because there is white digital ink on top of the answer, and I need to erase that to reveal the answer. I can come down to my pen tray and use the eraser from my pen tray to erase the digital ink that's on top, the white digital ink that is on top, or I can come up to my toolbar, and in my tool panel here in the center, I will come down to the far right, lower right corner and press on the eraser, which brings up the contextual panel, and I can press the tab for the button for a small eraser, a medium-sized eraser, or a large eraser. Come down, and a tip here is um, just use one finger, curl the rest of your fingers underneath, come down here and start erasing the white digital ink that's on top to reveal the answer of the value of the cubes. Once again, these are three examples of hide and reveal activities. Move and reveal, order and reveal, and embrace and reveal. Let's take a look now at um, some specific uses. Why would you use hide and reveal in your lessons? Give me some thoughts that you've got. Good. The first one here, okay, I still see my eraser. That's telling me that I need to go back up in my toolbar to my tool panel here in the center, and I need to go back up in the upper left-hand corner of my tool panel and press on the select tool. That allows me to press on this object, drag it, and there's our first reason why we might use the hide and reveal tool, to stimulate student thinking. We're giving them a chance to think before they see the answer. Anybody have another idea? Okay. We can add interactivity to the lesson. We can have our students come up and, and reveal the lesson, reveal the, the answer to the lesson. Another example why we might want to use hide and reveal is to paste the discussion. I'm actually pasting the discussion now by only revealing one item at a time. And finally, we can urge, encourage collaboration, which is a 21st century skill that we need to be thinking about with our students. 
Um, we can get them to collaborate by hiding that answer first, giving them time to discuss it, and then um, coming and revealing that answer. So once again, I'm using, um, here, I'm using Move and Reveal to show you some of the reasons why you might want to use these activities in your lesson. I'm going to come back over here to my page sorter. Use my slider bar, just drag on the slider bar down, and move on to my fifth slide. This is an example of a real lesson page that is using um, Erase to Reveal. This one, let me pull my pull tab out over here, press on the pull tab, bring it out. Just as, it's just an example of a way where I can share some extra information with you. This car wash Erase and Reveal lesson came from the Smart Exchange, and that is a website where you can get ideas for lessons, or you can download lessons that have already been created, use them like they are, modify them. Great place to go and, and, and get, get ideas. So this page came from the Smart Exchange, and if you want to follow along in your beginner's learner workbook, we are actually now on page 42. I'll move this tab back over so that we can see our lesson page. And once again, this is an erase to reveal, so I can either use my eraser that's down here in my pen tray, or come up here at the top of my screen to my toolbar in the tools panel, the lower right hand corner, press on the eraser, I now see my contextual tool panel. I'm going to go with the larger eraser here by pressing on the button on the right, wrap my fingers around so I'm using one, and start to reveal the color of my car by erasing the mud off. You might have thought it was gray, but it is actually red. One other tip here, um, this is an activity that's probably for younger children, maybe pre-K, kindergarten, or first. It may be that your tools are too high up here on the top. You may want to come over and on the far right hand side, upper corner, there is an arrow, top and bottom. If you press the arrow, it will move the toolbar down to the bottom. Once again, I can do it from the bottom, press the arrow, and it moves my toolbar back up to the top. So depending on what age you're working with, you may need to move your toolbar. So that's just a tip that you might want to to think about. The example of our third kind of hide and reveal activity is order and reveal. And let me use my pull tab here. I'll press on it. Once again, I'm still in my eraser. So I need to go up to my toolbar in my tools panel, upper left hand corner, press on the select tool. Now I can pull my magnifying glass over. It's asking me Use the magnifying glass to reveal the five most populated cities in the world. As you see, I can pull my magnifying glass, drag it, and see where those are. This is an order and reveal activity because it uses layers. White background, white letters, and I need to drag the magnifying glass as a layer in between with a contrasting color so that the letters are revealed. As I mentioned, I have a full tab over here again. Press on the pull tab, drag it out. This lesson came from the gallery tab, the lesson activity example. If I come over here to the far right side of my white, my interactive whiteboard, in my side tabs, the first one that we've been using is the page sorter tab. I'm now going to go down to the second tab, which is my gallery tab. Press on the gallery tab, and you can see that it comes up with different information here. Um, I, I, I can go in my gallery and I can look lesson activity examples, press on lesson activity examples, and I can see examples of different lessons here at the bottom. I can use my slider bar over here to move up and down to look at and choose different examples to use, to modify in my lessons. This is actually can be found on page 43 in your beginner's learner workbook. Now that you've seen examples of real lessons for the three different kinds of hide and reveal activities, let's go back to the page sorter, which is the top tab over in my side tabs. And let's look at an example that we can do together now. I've created a move and reveal activity on patterns. So this might be something for younger learners again. 
I have a pattern underneath this, this box, this object. So as I use my select tool to move my object over, I begin to reveal my pattern. And as you go along, all those benefits that we talked about a while ago about collaboration and interaction, you can talk to your students about this pattern as you go along. So as you can see, I have an A, B, B pattern as I begin to reveal it. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to give you the opportunity now to create one. So let's, let's add a slide. As you can tell, we are at the last slide, at the last page now of our, of our lesson. So let's add a page. If you look over here in the far right bottom corner, there is a blank page with a green plus sign on it. If I press that button, I now have a new page that is added to the bottom of my lesson. I need to create my shapes in my pattern now. So I'm going to go up to my tool bar and in my tools panel, press on the, the button, which is just to the right of the select button. My contextual panel shows up with shapes. My first shape was a circle, so I will press the circle button in the upper left-hand corner of the contextual menu. I'm coming over to the right-hand side of my contextual menu now to the color palette. Press the drop-down menu. I'm going to come over here on the left side, and I'm going to choose the blue color by, by pressing it, which is my fill color. On the right-hand side, my line color, I'm going to choose blue as well. Come over here into my space and drag a circle onto my page. Okay, now I need a red rectangle, so I go back up to the same toolbar, over into my contextual toolbar for my shapes, press on the rectangle, move over to the right to the color palette. I'm going to choose by pressing red this time for my fill color and my line color. Come over and drag my rectangle shape onto my page. Going back to my select tool now in my tool panel, upper left corner of my tool panel, I'm going to come over. I need to create a second red rectangle. With my select tool chosen, I'm going to choose my red rectangle and press on the, the drop down menu. And the first option is clone. I will press on clone and it creates a second object for me. Move it into line and you can start to see my pattern form. I'll do the same thing with my blue circle. Press on it to choose it. Drop down menu, the first option is clone it, and move it over into the line, and you can see how I can build my pattern now. The last thing that I need to do is create the box that goes on top of it, the object that goes on top of it. I'm going to go back into my toolbar, in the center, into my tools panel, and click on shapes to the right of the, the select tool. Come over in my contextual tool panel, on the upper row, third from the left, Press on the rectangle, following over to the right in the color panel, I'm going to choose black as my fill color and my line color as well. Press and drag a box on top of it. I've now created the, the hide. Up in my tools panel, select tool up in the upper left hand corner and as I come over now, I can reveal my pattern that is underneath. Okay, as we talked about, you've got several options here of different ways that you can hide and reveal. This is a move and reveal, and um, you also have the opportunity to do erase to reveal or with working with layers. Is there any questions? If not, why don't you go ahead and add another page and let's get started.